Z-Wave. Z-Wave is not dead. Look, Z-Wave, this is the ZWA2. It's a long range indoor Z-Wave antenna. Z-Wave. I'd just about given up on Z-Wave. I'd Frankensteined my hardwired DSC alarm system with sensors to feed Home Assistant because, you know, my Z-Wave stuff wasn't really working all that reliable. You might've seen that video. It's been a while since then. But now, now I've got hope for Z-Wave again. This, the Home Assistant Connect ZWA2. Hello! This is the Connect ZWA2, the new long range Z Wave USB adapter from the official Home Assistant team. The optimized antenna design is going to go for hard to reach spots and uh, even then beyond. It's going to support classic Z-Wave plus the new Z-Wave long range. MSRP is $69 US or 59 euro. It's cheaper in Europe. Well, what in the economic consternation is going on in the US? So with my home assistant set up, I swapped this out for my old Action Tech USB Z-Wave stick. And that was the large source of the not always awesome experience with that, as I'm sure that anybody that has used the Action Tech USB Z-Wave stick has experience. But the ZWA2 uh, responsiveness, the responsiveness improved substantially. So I also added two new Z-Wave sensors, smart plug and the, the water leak sensor because it's awesome. I've got carbon monoxide sensors and door sensors and some other stuff, light switches, and all of that has been rock solid. This isn't just hype. I'm already seeing a difference. Finally, Z-Wave that feels reliable and amazing. You can tell I'm excited. If you aren't familiar with Home Assistant though, let me take a second to plug Home Assistant and you know the awesome Home Assistant setup. Like this is just the antenna. The antenna screws into the, into the base. Like how insane is that? If you've heard of Home Assistant, but you haven't yet taken the plunge, now might be the time to take the plunge. Home Assistant's rise, millions of households at this point. Uh, it's actually one of the most active open source projects on GitHub, period, is rooted in this very simple idea. No more corporate rug pulls. No, you know, you were the product type things. I mean, you've heard of some of these cases, I'm sure. Google Nest. Uh, it works with Nest. Nest was shut off on August 31st, 2019. Google closed the Nest program then breaking third-party automations with Nest. So if you had a Nest thermostat or camera, well, those integrations died on August 31st, 2019. Uh, even Google's own smart home partners had to uh, scramble. Um, Dropcam and uh, Dropcam Pro and Nest Secure, they went fully end of life on April 8th, 2024. No app access, no streams, no recordings, nothing. Discounts, replacements for some, but uh, the lesson's kind of the same here, don't you think? Uh, Insteon, maybe you had some Insteon stuff. They abruptly turned off their cloud uh, service and uh, the, the standing hubs and the apps and everything quit working. Some devices kept working locally, but many users were locked out of the, the basic functionality of their devices. Uh, more recently, the Nordic Track Fit stuff, they pushed updates that locked down privilege mode on treadmills. Treadmills, a smart treadmill that removed the unofficial but widely used ability to run other apps. Owners who bought that capability or bought those and used that capability uh, suddenly, you know, felt like they needed some right to repair and the right to repair fight for that is ongoing. There's a ton of examples of that that we cover all the time on this channel. So even just a smart speaker. I'm sure if you have a smart speaker, your smart speaker is just listening when you don't want it to. So it can build an ad profile or do something else or the functionality has changed. Guess what? Home Assistant has their own smart speaker too, and it's awesome. And that was covered in another video. You should check it out. You know what I'm never gonna have to endure in my smart home? Sensors and controls and devices that stop working mysteriously because some middle manager somewhere decided that the terms of service was going to change and I didn't check something or I did check something or my smart speaker now works differently than it did yesterday because something else has changed. Have you noticed how dumb Siri has gotten? I mean, I haven't because I don't do Apple, but I hear that's a thing from the level one forums. I love seeing everybody get wise to the held hostage by their own technology ecosystem. And I love when people, you know, get wise to that and they start looking for products that don't do that. And I love that technology has progressed to the point that randos can put R&D and manufacturing stuff together to build a product like this. 
and can actually get it to the masses and scale and have it go to market so that other people can actually buy it. It doesn't take, you know, billions of dollars. That's the Open Home Foundation and Home Assistant and Nabucasa. But getting wise, getting wise is not just for the customers. It's also the corporate structure that brought us this, which is another thing that I'm really excited about because it takes money to do research and development. It takes money to, you know, do warranty support for products and that sort of thing. So you need, you know, there, there has to be for profit in there somewhere, a corporation. Well, Home Assistant and the Open Home Foundation exist. They're structured to guard against exactly this kind of hazard, creating a bulwark against surveillance capitalism, acquisition by a third party company that might change the, the way that they operate, and uh, abandonment. Suffice it to say that if you have tried to do the smart home thing, you may have experienced hubs or light bulbs or remotes or treadmills or whatever that, you know, functionality has been gutted because the server flips off or a product manager pivots and thinks they can make money a different way. But that, it does, you know, you don't have to do that. Home assistant is local and it's local first. Your automations will keep working even if some random company changes their mind because it doesn't automatically introduce a change into your stuff. The Open Home Foundation is a Swiss nonprofit, and they now own and govern Home Assistant, ESP Home, and like 250 smart home projects. And the corporate structure is actually built to resist tech pivots and acquisition and all that sort of thing. And then there's Nabu Casa, which uh, is a for-profit company. They make the official hardware and cloud stuff, cloud tunnels, and they get the majority of the revenue funding the foundation. The, the funding flows one way, though, to the nonprofit, not vice versa. In 2025, the full-time home assistant or the home uh, open home staff moved to the foundation, from what I understand. And that might be, like, I think that's the corporate structure. I'm not 100% on that, but you should look into it. It's really interesting. There's a lot of uh, corporate incentive in the structure to not make it terrible for the customers. And so I think that home assistant as an acquisition target for making it crappy, like Google couldn't just come in and buy them and then make everything crappy because they have a successful product. And as nice as this is, <laughs> maybe there's real danger of that. There are corporate acquisition strategies out there where companies will just buy other companies to get at their customers. Look at what Google had done with some of the early smart home projects and, and automation stuff. They just bought them to absorb them. And then when the product didn't align with what Google's vision was, it's like, ah, we'll just shut it down. But that, that left kind of a void. That's the long context for you know, what we're looking at with Z-Wave here. I like that the Open Home Foundation is an earnest attempt to solve this for people. It's a corporation for the people, at least it seems like. And that's what this is about. Local governance, local control, and a path that, uh, you know, is cloud optional, but still works with local integrated stuff. Maybe even a full revival of Z-Wave device production and Z-Wave stuff that people can enjoy. And the ZWA2, this thing, is a tangible representation of this model. Uh, it's open hardware, it's seamless integration with Home Assistant and community support and community support will fuel long-term sustainability. Home Assistant users, DIYers, tinkerers, and the pros alike benefit from device longevity and local control and no surprise shutdowns or really no surprises at all anywhere in the software stack. But this isn't just a better Z-Wave stick, kinda. It's a statement. Home Assistant and the Open Home ecosystem are here to stay. And while it isn't yet as convenient as some of the other uh, turnkey smart home assistants were when they were riding high on uh, billionaire or multi-billionaire financing, it works. And it's going to work. And it's going to continue to work. So I'm excited for the less sociopathic home automation future because every year it is dramatically less DIY than when I built my own DSC alarm integrations. And... Uh, if you have Z-Wave and you've had any issues with Z-Wave at all, this is the real deal. If you care about open source and privacy and resilient smart homes and know that the infrastructure is, you know, behind the smart home assistant stuff is, is built to endure, then it's a no brainer to choose this ecosystem. If you pick one of these up or, you know, you're just, you've got a particularly fancy home assistant setup that you'd like to show off in the, in the forum, then I think you should hit us up in the forum. Show what you've been able to accomplish with Home Assistant so that others can be inspired by what you've done the same way that I did in some of my earlier videos. And for now, know that there is actually a viable, awesome Z-Wave device. And if you have problems with it or whatever, hit us up with that in the forum too, because real world use case. I, for my part, 
mostly it was just the smoke alarms and light switches that were left, but adding a couple of smart plugs and uh, you better believe I'm gonna be able to pick up some more water sensors because the water sensors that I have now are integrated into the alarm panel. And there's a little bit of a delay with them because they, um, they only react like once every 10 or 15 minutes and this responds a lot more quickly. So I'm pretty excited about that. I wanted this is level one. And uh, yeah, this is the ZW ZWA2, just quick and easy, something that is launching literally today, the day that I'm making this video. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed mine, but if you pick one up and you know, I don't know, hit us up in the forum. I'm Wendell Up signing up, I'll see you there.